What makes a college? Is it the golden stone, the sober grace, the hall's high roof, the old carved oak, the stern moustachioed portraits, melon starters, shot in the guinea fowl, no smoking please, and once a year, Watkin Williams wins peculiar pudding. Is it the still, musty chapel with its candlelight and litanies? Or the rush to print on time, an essay crisis looming? Sleepy afternoons in the Habakkuk or Wilson, the stained, seldom worn formal clothes? Or never, ever stepping on the grass, even when you come back in your mind? The books unread, the lanes unexplored. It is all that, of course, but it's also something narrower, longer. A window, a strip of sky past gables, just enough to know how broad it really is. Or a sense, as you ascend the spiral staircase, that someone has gone up before you. It is an archway opening up to splendor. It's the wisteria, with all its stories of mortarboards, trashings, all rowing glories. It's a distant organ chord, the muffle of voices going about late Thursday's rehearsal. Tea in the toot amidst the books and the busts and the dust. Late lunch, the boathouse before dawn or brunch in the MCR. The cold mornings made martyr to late, late nights. It's the little Wales beyond England that welcomes you back each time in a different language. And this is all because Stone can't remember but the fresher sometimes can. We have to leave, but we overlap like the pages in the library. We send letters across decades to the plodge, chalk up our eights and torpids, but still see older colours blazing through the stone. We matriculate to the rest of our lives, give up our rooms, our seat at formal, the desk in the library we've claimed for ourselves, leave them empty for others to fill. Yet we overlap in the light of this place, collegiate, close.